Good morning, America. <laughs> good morning. And good morning to you as well, Scott. A pleasant surprise to see actually a customer also involved in uh, the print uh, demonstration and, and presentation here. So uh, uh, great to see you both. I hope you are fresh and awake because uh, we are uh, now going to kick some butt, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so Michael, it's been a while. How are you? I'm great. It's good to see you again. It's been quite a while. Last time I saw you was probably one of the Chicago trade shows. Yeah, I think so. Because uh, did you exhibit at uh, Printing United in Dallas? I can't remember if you did. No, we didn't. But we are in the next one in October. Fantastic. Print Biz will have a stand there uh, October uh, 18 through 20. 18 through 20. That's the first time actually exhibiting on our own in quite a while. So we're really really looking forward to it. We will be there. and We will definitely stop by and make an interview so we can get the latest... uh, uh, gossip and updates from from uh, printviews in America, right? So uh, that's great. Yeah. So um, we have a little like 10, 5, 10 minutes chat here before we go to the presentation. Scott, uh, who are you and where do you work? Hi, uh, my name is Scott Carrot. I'm the president of Courier Graphics and uh, we are a web and sheet fed printer in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm going to see you next Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're I didn't know. It, I didn't know it was you, but uh, that's uh, that just makes it even even better because then I at least know how you uh, how you look when I get to see you in person in a couple of weeks' time, right? <laughs> perfect, perfect. No, that's, that's serendipitous. Sorry, what? That's serendipitous. I had no idea you're actually visiting Courier. You didn't know? Okay, that's just amazing. No, no uh, we have a we have a U.S. trip starting on uh, Wednesday next week, and uh, we're flying into uh-huh. Phoenix uh, Sunday evening to visit uh, Scott and his company. So, uh, I, I, fantastic! Great to great, great to know, and great to see you, Scott. I look forward to see you and your company. Uh, it will be exciting. I, I am sure about that. So, Michael, uh, does that mean that you you don't even know what's going on in your own backyard, or <laughs> apparently not? <laughs> okay, go to the west. Go and kick some butts with the, with your Danish colleagues. See, so Scott, I can say that because I'm Danish myself. So I I think it's okay. <laughs> so uh, Michael, um, just a few questions before we we hear your presentation. Uh, a lot of things is also ha- going on with uh, uh, print fees, right? Uh, one one thing is of course that with all the development of uh, Microsoft, uh, you of course I wouldn't say that you get a lot of things for free because you don't. But I mean uh, all the development of uh, 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 ERP systems like the the Microsoft that you you're based on, it must get new. Yeah, it must be so nice because you get get a lot of things like the 365, uh, which is still relatively new uh, as part of integration. Uh, uh, Printviz now is also a subscription model, as far as I remember. Uh, so you can both mm-hmm. have a license or a subscription model, um, and and uh, then you just keep developing uh, technology that is, uh, I think, very much aligned with what the customer needs in the market, right? That's the whole strategy, yeah. We, we build the print-specific functionality. We are the MIS built into the base platform of Business Central, so their ERP. So in, when we discuss PrintViz as a solution, it's always MIS slash ERP because it really is a complete solution, and, and Business Central provides all of the back end and the uh, the financial package, the CRM, the warehouse management, that kind of thing, mm. and we that allows us to be free to simply deal with the needs of print companies, mm. all kinds of print companies too. And it's uh, quite amazing because when I think about it for a second, I mean, I think we have nine companies presenting here today, uh, and and you are actually the only one that offer a complete solution with both ERP and MIS solution. Um, Scott, uh, was that? part of uh, the decision process for you when you chose printvs or was that just an added bonus <laughs> no um like are you saying like the accounting and everything bundled in together yeah that was definitely like a, a, dis- a deal breaker for us if it didn't have all that included it wasn't something that we would consider mm. and uh print this checks those boxes and many more for sure Hmm. And of course, we're going to both uh, talk about that and, and definitely also see that when we come and, and see you, uh, Scott. But I was just thinking, because um, uh, M- Mike, uh, Michael, does that mean that, that when you have all these things in like in one solution, does that make you less competitive if people are looking at price? Or is that or how, how does that influence? I mean, if you look at something that is uh, only an MIA system and only and then you don't and you have to buy your, your ERP system on the side or financial system on the side, I 
I would imagine that there might be somebody who's starting looking at the price before they understand that it's part of print fees or, or how is that? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah actually, um, it leads to some confusion until people understand our, our model, right? But uh, it's one of the main things is, is, especially with a move to the cloud, it's so affordable, hmm. right? So you're getting this complete solution with the incredible backbone of Microsoft, including the integration with their whole technology stack. So they have a world of apps on app source and print is basically an app now where you can go and start a free trial. Um, you can, you can, we're working on onboarding so people can learn it to do yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to do that. And I'm included. And basically, uh, once the implementation is done, uh, we work with a worldwide network of partners. Once the impl implementation is done, you have your partner as your connection and your backup support. And you're just paying for your monthly users. Mm. And we have different tiers of pricing for the users who don't need full permissions. So most of the registration users, we call them, are your folks out on the shop floor. Mm. And they're paying something like $19 a month per wow. user. And, and you can attach it to a device. Yeah. So uh, Microsoft has what they call a device user. Mm -hmm. So you tie in your, your registration user with a device, which could be your machine. Mm. And you can be running your whole shop floor, depending on your amount of employees and such, for you know, two hundred dollars a month or something. Wow, it's really so that, quite amazing. So that basically means that I mean, for the interest, I mean, really large players in the market, they need to have software like PrintVis and, and ERP systems. But you're basically giving the all the power of uh, of what you're offering together with Microsoft on a extremely scalable uh, path. So even the smaller companies can get full access to something that they would not be able to afford years ago, right? It's scalable and flexible. Those are the two key words here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and what about the, the learning curve? Because I remember I used to work in a, in a printing company in Denmark uh, almost 20 years ago where we had print these. Uh, and it was not because I didn't like it, but I remember as being in sales, I was like, oh, there's, it is a complex, it is a complex solution because at that time it looked like Windows 3.1, I would about to say, right? And I know today, of course, it looks uh, different and feels and, and things like that, but, but is the learning curve steeper when you have all the, those uh, facilities around it or is it just about how you get used to things? You know, I think that um, Microsoft is constantly improving the interface. So, so the, the look and feel of Business Central, how you navigate around the system, um, it can be complex. It's a very robust system, mm -hmm. but it is very scalable. And so you can have a mom and pop print shop with just two users who are only using one small corner of the system. Mm -hmm. I like to compare it to a hotel. Mm -hmm. Say you own a hotel, but uh, think of print business, just the penthouse suite. Right, you don't necessarily touch every floor in the hotel every day, but it's there if you need it. You mean so, what? You mean what you do is basically yeah. you go straight to the penthouse and, and 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 put yourself in the bubble bath and order champagne. That's what you say, right? That's what I'm trying to say. That's exactly. <laughs> is that how you feel it as well, Scott? That you have bought yourself a penthouse with uh, free deliveries of champagne, or? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> sometimes too much champagne, and sometimes not enough. <laughs> but you know, the system is incredibly robust and it does have many layers and, and flexibility, which is great. Um, you know, and, and there's pros and cons of that. Something that's extremely robust, you can grow with it. Something that's really simple and easy to use isn't going to be robust. Um, and, and we found that. How long time have you had it? We went live on March 1st of this year. Oh, so so you still do? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you feel? I mean, did you come? Did you come from another ERP system or MIS system, or or was it the first time you have these kind of systems? Yeah, we came with a, pre a previous system, okay. uh, EFI's Monarch. Uh, okay. We had that for five or six years, and before that, we were on EFI Logic. Okay. Um, so so it was, from a it was from a business. Big. Sorry, yeah. Go ahead. No, no. Go so ahead. from a business perspective, is there like? Uh, I mean, when you change something as as fundamental as as a financial system and also the MIS system from an employee's perspective and from a management perspective, is there, I mean, do you see the advantages right away or, or is it more something that comes over time? No, we, we saw advantages immediately uh, from day one. I think maybe at least five or six people were be able to repurpose in a different way. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, just the capacity, the increased capacity from, and we saw that from all our research and looking at print is like, wow, this can do this so much faster and easier and repetitive and repeat jobs and things like that, that right from day one, we, we saw a huge increase in productivity and, 
and automation really. Mm. Fantastic guys. Um, I will let you uh, take over the stage for at least uh, 25, 30 minutes. And then uh, uh, if there's anybody uh, uh, want to just ask some questions, you can use that on uh, uh, Facebook, on uh, LinkedIn, on YouTube, and it will pop up here so I can moderate uh, questions. Otherwise I will, I'm sure I will have some questions for you afterwards. So uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, take it away and uh, just to share your screen and I will Give you access to it the moment i see it here so um, okay thank you so much. and more than that, i also want to say that the, i have another guest yeah um, i have not seen hugh that cleveland from, yeah a, a gentleman named hugh cleveland from seller should be coming on so perhaps when i'm done showing the system yeah we can have him on to share his experience as well so do you want him and scott to be on on the, on the screen at the same time or one at the time sure Okay, fine. Um, okay, sure. the moment the moment he get there and you finish with your presentation, I will bring him in with, if he's here. Okay, great. All right, super. If you can tell me what you see, I don't see anything yet. Okay. It says that I'm sharing. It doesn't show up here. Um, it has worked all day long, so uh, let's try again. Are you using okay, a Chrome, Chrome browser? Oh, here it comes. Here we go. You are online, sir. Okay. Do you see the full presentation? Hopefully, not my notes. I see uh, your full presentation, and I don't see your notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well. We covered a lot of, of the introduction, <clears throat> pardon me. But I just want to kind of recap everything about the system. For the audience, PrintViz is a Microsoft certified MIS and we are built specifically for the print industry. We're built directly on Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. It's a mouthful. It used to be known as Dynamics NAV or NAV, simply called. Uh, we've been working on PrintViz and developing it continuously for over 25 years now. And PrintViz works with the most basic and most advanced needs for all the tasks and processes in the admin and production of pre-press, press, and post-press. So we work with any size or type of print or graphics company. As you can see in the graphic there, we work with um, label, packaging, flexo, commercial print, of course, wide format, newspaper, book printers. And now we're actually uh, dipping into apparel as well. So. It really doesn't matter but because Business Central works with manufacturing. Print is discrete manufacturing. Really, it's an ideal combination and most anything that you're producing um, that requires the, the address of print specific uh, concerns such as substrates, inks, um, materials consumption, time consumption, machine speeds, those sorts of things. Those are all of the specific functionalities that PrintViz brings to the ERP of Business Central. Okay, PrintViz gives you estimating, quoting, planning, scheduling, um, of course, full production management. You can manage your inventory, your purchasing, shop floor management. So as I was mentioning, you can have all of your stations out on the shop floor. With PrintViz, they'll have a special role center, which I'll show you. And that allows them to log in and out of their jobs, record their time, send comments to their colleagues as the job moves down its workflow. Now, the vision of PrintViz has been threefold. Number one, specifically to develop and create a standard system for the print world. We emphasize standardization, not customization. And now that extensions are, have matured, um, specific customizations that all of our customers need. Every, every customer we have needs something or other in the world of customizations, but we keep it off of the standard system to reduce implementation times and keep upgrades simple and quick. And we are built on a globally proven ERP platform. And we add our deep knowledge, of course, of the graphics industry. Most of my colleagues come from some sort of print background, as I do myself. I was, I was a, a, in print finishing specifically for 20 years. Started out running Klugies and numbering machines, Heidelbergs, uh, Mealy verticals, and um, moved into sales and customer service. And then finally went, as uh, our CEO says, to the dark side of tech. But we bring in a lot of print background experience. So we know what we're talking about. We know the needs of the industry. 
And lastly, we build our global network of dedicated, well-trained partners so that you have representation and support on a local level. We have uh, over 350 installations in 42 countries around the world currently. Our birthplace and headquarters is in Denmark. And we have, we're actually at our core, a small company. We're, we're just over 20 employees and we are stationed in different countries worldwide. So here's a glimpse of some of our partners. And the idea again is to give our customers local support on a world solution. Now, as I mentioned, PrintViz and Business Central are seamlessly combined solution. You may or may not know that Microsoft's long-term strategy has been for the partners to build vertical specific solutions on top of their core ERP. And we've built our print specific layer on Business Central. And this lets us focus on the unique needs of printers and let the core ERP functionalities remain handled by Microsoft. So we don't have to fix that wheel, you know, and they, they constantly are improving business central. It's really an exciting product and they're moving forward to it with it in a, in a great way with their budget and their sophistication. I mean, the interface that you're about to see, uh, Morton, as you mentioned, nav used to look a little bit clunky. I agree, agree with that. Um, business central is just getting better and better. So here's some of the capabilities that you can see with Business Central. I'm sorry, go back. It'll give you financial management, sales and service, project management, supply chain operations, and of course, very robust reporting and analytics. And another aspect that it should be pointed out is the really powerful mobile experience. And when Hugh comes on, he's gonna tell you about that. He's working from Ontario for a Texas-based company and he can sit at a, on a beach with a campfire going and change his production schedule for the next morning from his mobile device. Also, before I jump into the system, I want to show you one really excellent and powerful aspect. PrintViz integrates with Outlook. So many people in the audience probably already use Microsoft Outlook for their daily emails. If you see up here, this is the integration. We have a contact insights button and you can view key information on a person from an email from their company. You can look at their customer history, related contacts, their credit balance, and even more. So you see here, I've pressed the contact insight button. Here comes the customer with the fact box showing all current orders and cases, anything that you need to know right here in your email. So this is great for your salespeople on the road who need instant access to important data. Additionally, with integrations, of course, Microsoft plays well with others. And we have a huge amount of integrations with various third party solutions, including a variety of web to print, stuff, web -to -print shops. Uh, we are JDF JMF certified, that's job definition format. That allows your machines to talk to the system and give real-time data on speeds, um, need procurement. Uh, we, we deal with paper companies and other third-party solutions for e-procurement such situations. Uh, we use Moxa Box for accounting. That's again, back with the JDF. And of course, any other specific system such as uh, shipping, third-party shipping solutions so that um, your shipping department can find the least expensive options for FedEx, UPS, et cetera. Okay, so I think I'm ready to dive in and show you the system for a moment. So I need to share a different window, Morton. Sure. Um, Let's see how I do it. It's just about clicking the right buttons. There are so many here, right? <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> Let's see. I'll find it. Here we are. Okay, so great. Take it away. And I just wanted to say, just for clarification, uh, I said it was chunky. I don't think it's chunky anymore. So just for for be one hundred percent on that one. I can't have I can't have that on mm -hmm. my shoulders. Uh, not too close. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's the interface is is constantly improving and it's much more um, attractive and uh, intuitive. I'd say. So what you're seeing here is what we call the role center. And this is where everyone starts out. 
and it's a role sensor tailored to your role in your company. So I'm logged in as a print viz coordinator. This is my customizable dashboard. Across here, we see a list of cases. Now, this is the terminology that we use specifically in print viz and business central. A case, what is a case? Well, it's the repository for all the information and data related to any specific order or quote request. So, you know, not every quote request becomes an order. It still becomes a case in print viz. You know, it may stop right there because they rejected your quote. But generally, it goes from request for quote to quote to quote sent to order into planning and production all the way through to shipping, um, job costing, invoicing, etc. all the way until you archive your case. So here's a list of cases that I have coordinated. And as a coordinator, I can do uh, estimates. I can move it into production planning. I can move it into scheduling. I can um, write invoices, that sort of thing. But not all of your users need to have all of those permissions. So as I was discussing before, you would have far fewer permissions out on the shop floor. You don't need to dive that deeply into the system. You just want to record your time and materials. You can see on my dashboard here, I have customizable charts. In this case, I'm showing product groups for a commercial print company. We produce magazines, catalogs, posters, business cards, that kind of thing. But you know, if you're a packaging company, you could have all different product groups here, label company. I might be responsible for a certain handful of customers. I can have that view here with their balances, trailing sales orders. I might be the procurement manager. So here's a list of all the different papers and substrates that I'm responsible for keeping in stock. And we even have print business news, which we launched to cover. We can let our end customers see that there's a new release out and they can turn to their partner and say, hey, we want to upgrade. Across the top, you see multiple ways to navigate the system. As I was talking about it being quite robust, it's a very large system, but you can see my view here is actually quite tight and doesn't need to be so expansive so that it's an intimidating experience. And you can get anywhere you need to in the system. Just a few clicks. Anything that I need to see that says item or sales, anywhere in the system you need to go, search functionality is your friend. So let's quickly dive into the list view. This is my case list. You can see each case has a unique ID number, an individual quote, no, quote number, order number, the name of the job, the name of the customer, its current status. What is the status of the job in its workflow at the moment? This is how PrintBiz works. So you go from request for quote to quote. You see here quote sent. This one is in production. This one is all the way ready for invoicing. Okay, so we get into status codes and I'll show you a bit more about that in just a moment. We also have our deadline listed, who is responsible, who coordinated the case, and who is the salesperson affiliated with that job. So let's say I am a salesperson out on the road and our friends at the Canon Group are asking for a repeat order of their previous PO. And I can look into my product groups and it's their magazine. Again, this is commercial print product groups. You would, depending on what you're producing, you have a whole different list of your standard product groups for your company. In this case, you can see I also have this affiliated with a template. Well, a template, as you might imagine, is going to make things short and sweet. Already down here, I have a quantity, 32 page magazine, eight and a half by 11, four over four and a price. And from here, as a salesperson, I could send this off, change my status to quote. I can send the quote from here print and or email it in a customizable Word document. And I can say, okay, well, this is this job is ready to go. However, if I, I wanna show you a little bit on the more granular side of things when we say, well, what actually went into this? And also because it's associated with a template, it populated a quantity, but I can actually change that right here without changing my template, change the price, and I can go into my job card and show you the details without getting too granular of the job. You can see I've got my text and cover for my magazine. I can go to my specifications card. It's going to show me the imposition on the sheet. First of the text, two across, two back, and then of the cover, two across, one back. Okay, 
Within this, you can see that it's identified the paper that I want to use, both for my cover and for my text. It's showing me the, that I'm printing this work in turn, it's showing me my minimum format, the estimated scrap affiliated with this job. And I can go into my estimate here. On the left side, you see the quote. Here's the quoted price. On the right side, here's the system's calculation with all of its details. Okay, this, this is a fixed price based on your setup, but we could say, well, first you can see here, my net profit is 10%. I've keyed that in. Let's say our boss doesn't want anything out the door without a 10% profit margin. But in this case, we really need the work and our customer has come back and said, well, last time you did it for a straight 4,000. And just key that in manually here. You can see it's changed the profit margin a little bit, little bit. And also the pricing method has gone from calculated to fixed, fixed quoted price. So this is where your estimators and your financial people can get really excited about seeing where you're making money, where you're not making money, and how to optimize your pricing for jobs. I can go to the estimating card itself and see what is involved in the building of this price. You can see across the top, I've got plating, proofing, um, paper, my press, and each time I choose one of these lines along the bottom, it shows me the details and the breakdown of the time and uh, price for each process. So I'm running this on two machines for the text and the cover. I've included folding, binding, shipping. Okay, even stuff like when you need to say, okay, well, this requires special order uh, table work. I can add a line here. You can see add admin, design, prepress, subcontracting, finishing. Let's say uh, this is a special order where they need 200 of these kit packed with a special anniversary medallion, something like that. Notice it's put it in chronologically in the correct place before shipping. I can go down here and add some hours as need be. If I have some table work that I'm just keying in as an estimator that this is a special special order, all of this is not affecting my template. And then additionally, I want to mention you do not need to use templates. It's a time saving uh, option. But of course, PrintViz will build a quote from scratch on every type of job you might need to do. We didn't even give a job a name. Inkish Magazine. Okay, the quote is sent. We've agreed on the price. I can change my status to order. I can change my status to plan and go into the planning. I haven't entered a due date and the system will give me that alert. Okay. I've still changed the status to plan. Here are our status codes. Obviously you don't use everyone, but you can have different status codes that help you build your pricing and production methods uh, based on your setup. So you might have a status code specific to web orders. They may be priced differently. They may be produced differently uh, depending on how you do your business. Okay, but you can see that these different status codes help us to move the job down the workflow and they are set up to move the job from responsible party to responsible party as a job goes down. So your cutter operator is going to have this show up on his role center when the previous operation has finished their job and it moves on to his responsible party. Okay, we are in plan. So let's jump into the planning card real quick. PrintViz, you can plan a whole lot of different ways based on when you need the job, based on when you know you can start. Let's say we can get artwork tomorrow for this magazine. I'm sorry. Let's say they need it next Friday. This is the requested shipment date. Earliest start date is tomorrow for artwork. And I can plan based on the start date. But you can see here, you can plan based on bottlenecks. So if you have a slow process, such as laminating sheets where they have to cool, you can key in some buffer time. Okay. But we are planning just based on the start date. Just like that, you can see all of the times and dates are populated for each process for this job. The job is planned. So let's move it to production. I'm going to show you our beautiful visual scheduling by going to the previous planning board. Back from my role center. Here we have the Printvis planning board. 
Down the left, you see our resources. You can collapse, prepress. There's a print, digital. Okay. Each one of these processes is co correlated with the job. You can scroll over the date for an expanded view. I hover over the job and it shows me all of the details of that job. If I click on the icon, it connects each process on the workflow, all for that specific job. And as you can tell, we've got some color coordinating going on here. So you can have different colors for specific customers or specific um, situations. So if the tile goes green, it could be that it's, the press is running. If it's red, it could be that there's a delay, some sort of issue. You can move things around. Uh, you can start a simulation from here. So if you're in your production department and you say, well, our operator uh, is sick, so we need to move this job to the afternoon shift for somebody else to do for the next uh, operator. I can move that manually here. Notice that it's changed color. And if that works, I can apply that simulation. Okay, so the job is replanned right here manually. So it's quite, quite a powerful tool and one that we use all the time in Printviz. And like everything else in the system, it's one that we're constantly improving. Now I want to jump over to the shop floor. You can see here with my settings, I use the gear. Printviz comes with a huge amount of different roles, as does Business Central. Okay, bookkeeper, salesperson, project manager, production manager, coordinator. Well, I'm going to become a shop floor worker. Okay. I'm going to toggle on teaching tips. That's when you hover over certain fields and it lets you know what the details of that field are and what, what its function is. Of course, you can change your time zone, your language. You can work with currency. You can work with units of measure. In this demo system, I am uh, using imperial units of measure, so square inches and such. But of course, we have a huge amount of customers using metric. So here I am logged in on the KBA Rapida. This is a shop floor workers role center. You can see it's sort of minimized, stripped down across the top are the places in the system that a press operator might want to see, such as their time recordings. Okay. Here's my production plan for the week, for the day. I'm logged into this specific press. I can choose a different cost center. That's what we call the presses. A cost center is anything where time and materials consumption is registered. So a table can be a cost center. You just add that to your list. Okay, you can see I have a variety of different types of machines and production methods in my cost sensors here. I can look at the week. Here are my individual jobs. You can see this one, Inkish Fall Collection, more than I did it in advance. I'm already on Make Ready. I love it. You can see that they have such a Q&A checklist, quality assurance, not Q&A, sorry, QA checklist. So you can have these customized, what sort of criteria does your press operator need to be able to check off? Do we have the correct sample? Are we sure we're working on the correct substrate, the correct ink color, etc.? You can send comments to your colleagues down the line. You can move to production when you're ready to run. You can have error codes such as internal error. You might, your machine might be down for maintenance. Uh, the customer may have provided the incorrect sample, so you can log that here. And that will move on down the line to the next operator and all the way down to your job costing where your um, your billing department can see, okay, why did this job take an extra three hours or something? The operator can print a job ticket directly from here. Again, a customizable document showing the level of detail that you want your operators to see. And you can just jump over to our digital department. We'll jump onto our Indigo. You see automatically I have a different list of jobs for the week. And same situation here. I can stop the job. You see on the right side, you have all of the details of the job. All right. I think that that is a, a quick tour for you. I don't want to belabor it. I think and hope that uh, 
you can see that the system is quite user friendly and quite uh, robust at the same time. I'm going to jump back to coordinator. And again, from here, I could do anything. I could invoice a job directly from the job. I can make a purchase with a purchase guide. So you can purchase on a case by case basis. And of course, with Business Central, you have the very powerful requisition worksheets. So if you're dealing with standing inventory, you'd work from there. But if this were a special order, ink, say, or a special laminate that I needed for a certain job, you can make a, a purchase that's uh, tied to one order from here. You can look at your job costing, the quote versus actual. You can look at hourly entries. So you can see Kit here is on make ready still for 167 hours. She's not doing too well today. Just kidding, of course, that's because I do the weekly demo, which I invite anyone else who wants to come and get a deeper look tomorrow. Um, I will put links in the chat if we have a chat to jump in and, and to get a longer view and tour of the system. So with that, Morton, I would like to jump back and uh, have our good friend Hugh Cleveland from Cellarep jump on board, if that's possible. Is he shown up yet? I think you're on I mute. Cannot... Yeah, there you go. Morton, I can't hear you. That's just because I was muted. Then you can't hear me, right? <laughs> no, uh, so, I haven't got uh, your other guest yet here. So, but maybe no. he will just jump in in a second here. Um, why are we waiting for him? I think uh, first of all, I'm very happy that you you're planning our autumn uh, campaign in the US. That's great because that is what we need. Yes. So thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, he, he, he says he's online. He says I am on and waiting whenever you all are ready. Maybe he's just watching. He has not followed the link that you sent him. Then he should use uh, um, live at uh, live.inkish.tv. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one he has. But let's send him. Oh, yeah. Definitely want to hear from him as well. Um, we had a nice call yesterday where he was uh, giving a story of of how he came to be responsible for the. Mm -hmm. For the solution, the software that uh, his company Cellarap needed, they're, they're interesting. And which and, company um, is it? Legacy company. company. Which company? It's is called Cellarap. C E L O Rap. Oh, Cellarap. Oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah, like the All old right. cellophane. It's a very old family business. Mm. But let's see if we can get him on board. But in the meanwhile, I will keep an eye here on my. I have like a interview window where I can see uh, who is calling in. So uh, let's let's see what happens. Um, I must say that I think it's a really sleek interface uh, Printvis has now because it's it is, uh, and I think what I liked about oh now we got a visitor here. So let's see. Hello, there is. you. <laughs> you are online Hello, with Akish. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Um, just before I ask you uh, to introduce yourself, you uh, I just uh, f f finish my question to you, uh, uh, Michael, because I mean, uh, it looks really sleek and nice. And what I really liked was when you changed role, uh, the accessible information that was needed for what you needed was like, I mean, condensed, right? So, so yeah. having these different roles where it is very convenient for the operator or, or the person in the company to just get whatever information is is uh, is requested and needed is uh, is something that is fine. I also must say that when I see how uh, you and Microsoft have been able to to utilize uh, browser compatibility, I would say I'm amazed how much you can squeeze out of a browser. Basically, right? It is a oh, yeah. it's a software that is very comprehensive and fast, so uh, fantastic. Great demo, by the way. Uh, Hugh, um, okay. welcome. Uh, you are from Cleveland, I guess, since you have, or is it your surname? <laughs> it's his surname. <laughs> it's his surname, okay. It could have been. So where are you, who are you and where are you from? So uh, my name is Hugh Cleveland. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of a company called Cellarap Packaging. Uh, the facility is just outside. It's in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex in a small town called Farmersville. Um, been around for 70 years. 
and uh, I actually run the facility from uh, from Ontario, Canada. So uh, really? the facility is is fairly remote uh, to from where I'm at. Fantastic. So um, I don't know, Michael. Have you planned to have a chat with these gentlemen, uh, or should I moderate? Or what what is the plan here? Um, I, I wanted to give Hugh a chance to talk about um, basically how he found himself charged with getting a new system for this this very old family company that had a, a bespoke system. Um, basically, I, I think it's a situation a lot of your listeners might be encountering where they have an old bespoke, uh, individually created uh, Excel based uh, type of estimating system. And there and that person in this his case is in his upper 70s, he's ready to retire, and uh, they suddenly find themselves in the need for a, a, a comprehensive solution uh, very quickly. If you'll tell them about that, yeah. Hugh, and also maybe mention your, your the requirements of your BRC certification. I think that's very interesting. So certainly, so we are a, a, a relatively small uh, food and medical packaging uh, supplier uh, out of Dallas, Texas. Um, we purchased the facility at the height of the pandemic in 2020. So it was a um, uh, we purchased the facility. It was a third generation family owned company, and um, it had a very unique ERP system in that a. Uh, a gentleman from Texas Instruments actually uh, was from this small town and developed a uh, an AP and AR system and sold it to multiple businesses in the uh, uh, Dallas Fort Worth Texas area. And uh, he was approaching uh, his late seventies and uh, uh, over a period of time had developed a system for four seller wrap that encompassed inventory and and uh, you know, a little bit beyond just accounting. But uh, we, you know, quickly realized, uh, you know, it wasn't scalable. It uh, it certainly wouldn't satisfy the requirements of the type of work that we wanted to bring into the facility. Uh, one of that those uh, requirements for for us is uh, BRC, which it used to stand for British Retail Consortium. It now stands for uh, Brand Recognition Through Compliance, and it's it's basically, you know, uh, it's kind of like an ISO type system where there's, you know, uh, outside regulations um, uh, and an auditing body that will come in and, and uh, you know, certify your facility for its cleanliness, its practices, the GMPs. Uh, but one of the critical factors is our ability to do recall very quickly. So the process is really, you know, if, if one of our raw material suppliers were to contact us to say, hey, look, we have a, a problem with our material and it could put someone's life at risk. We have to be able to, within 60 minutes, um, pick, a, pick a, a, a date and a time and a job at random and do a full recall. So we, we need to be able to tell you know all the raw materials that came in, where do they go? Uh, so it and and for our business, you know, we purchase uh, materials in bulk. So we will we'll bring in 80, 100,000 pounds of of film at a time, and so that that film could go to two jobs or could go to a hundred jobs. So if they pick a, a job that uh, the raw material had been divvied out to a hundred different jobs, we have to do a full recall on all of those hundred jobs. So you, uh, you might a, explain, uh, but just, just real quick, sorry to interrupt to, to, to clarify. Now these are, this is uh, you're using cellophane wrap for, for food products. And that's why this is important to be able to have, have things traceable. Is that right? Uh, food and medical. So we do uh, over wraps for, you know, IV bags, uh, for syringes, that type of thing. And then we also make, you know, direct food contact uh, food wraps. So cookies, uh, you know, flowers and, and those types of sandwiches that, you know, that type of food. So if, if something could possibly contaminate someone's food product, we've got to be able to do an immediate recall. So having a bespoke system with, you know, all these kind of bolt-ons, Excel, if uh, for scheduling and and something else for inventory just wouldn't work for for how we wanted to build the business. Mm -hmm. and so you know, I have been involved in multiple plants in the past. I've installed ten or fifteen ERP systems in, in different facilities through Canada and the U.S. And uh, we I knew we wanted a an ERP system that was fully integrated, but. Uh, we we're relatively small. We didn't have the technical resources of some of the facilities that I had come from. You know, some of the some of the companies I had worked for had technical teams larger than our plants. Crying out loud, so 
we 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 wanted something that was was manageable. Uh, ideally, I wanted something you know cloud based that wasn't a deal breaker, but we needed we needed something that was scalable and relatively easy to manage on a on an ongoing basis. Um, and that's you know we we um, ended up looking at multiple ERP systems and um, settled with uh, with PrintViz and worked with a a, a, a group uh, to implement us uh, a company called Y. Uh, they did a phenomenal job. Uh, we started the implementation in the fall of 2020. We went live uh, on January 1st. We did do a um, parallel system with, with the old system, but within a couple of months, we had turned off the old system and have been, uh, you know, live with uh, with PrintViz since then. And um, and it's, it's been a, a, a phenomenal experience. Um, you know, uh, one thing that you were mentioning just before I, as I was popping on was you liked the, the simplicity of the browser aspect of it. And that was one of the things that I just loved about the system, you know, kind of from day one mm -hmm. is, you know, we don't have to have an application loaded on someone's computer. Yeah. If we have someone traveling, all they need is a web browser and a link and, you know, the virtually any computer anywhere they're at, uh, they can, uh, you know, log in and, and do the, the work they needed actually last month. I was at my uh, campsite uh, camping with my kids and I closed month end and sent off all my reports with the hotspot with my uh, laptop because it requires very little bandwidth, you know, to do that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how we, we uh, uh, came about uh, uh, PrintFit. Fantastic story. I have a question. So basically when you explain uh, the, the, the situation about that you have zero tolerance and that you need to have traceability of, of uh, let's say, uh, everything you do in the, is that, is that something that is tied specifically to how PrintVis operates, how you manage to where, or where everything is, or is that just part of what you do as a business? Well, it's part of what we do as a business, but the, the capabilities within the system, uh, you know, we, we create barcodes and have lot numbers for every single roll of material that comes into our, our facility. So that basically so means, can, sorry to interrupt, so that basically means that the, the, if you if you print a lot number on it, you basically get it back so you can see, okay, that lot number went to this place and this lot number was printed on this thing. So you basically have all the... Uh, the the, the two-ways kind of communication between the inkjetting system, if you're using inkjet for, for, for that particular thing, and then back to you uh, to your uh, ERP MIS system. That's that's what you do, right? Yeah, I can see. You know, hey, you know this the, this twenty thousand pounds of material that came in. Um, you know, we we received in and on this date. We actually you know scanned it into the warehouse on this date. Um, the, the, these five rolls were used on you know this particular job that went on this uh, eight colored press on this date here are the in the operators that logged in to to run the job um, it produced x amount of pounds off the back end we then took it to our lamination department then it went to our slinging department and at the end of the day you know we shipped you know these 10 pallets uh, on multiple different dates out to the customer so i can go in a very uh, succinct format on a screen that you know 20,000 pounds came in here and here's the five jobs that it, it went to and it all ties together. So it's mm. just, it's, just it's, it's, it's more because it's an integrated system versus having the, uh, the Different. separate uh, system. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Scott, um, what was the main reason for you to pick? I mean, we spoke a little bit before we started the, the demo that the, the combined ERP MIS thing was a, a deal breaker for you. But uh, maybe explain a little bit about your business and how uh, PrintBees fit into to, to that uh, that business. Sure, sure. We're a, a web printer here in Phoenix, Arizona. We have uh, 70 full-time employees. Uh, we have web and cheap fed printing, and uh, we average around 25 to 30 million dollars in revenue each year. Um, the, the having a, a financial and a ERP and the MIS combined together was was something that we wanted to look for. It's a lot less headaches when two things are talking to each other. I think any printer can relate knowing that even if they have one printing press and it has different pieces on there and the printing, you know, the, the manufacturer's fighting is like, oh, it's this guy that's not working. Oh, it's that thing that's not working. And so having it all under one roof was a huge um, uh, benefit for us. The other main selling point for me was that the partnership with Microsoft and it being in the cloud and it being on 
being tied in with dynamics if you want to use the CRM and business central if you want to use the financials and all that stuff. It just seems like this is the wave of the future um, and that it's going to have Microsoft's backing. It's it's going to it's going to be a really strong platform for a very long time. And it's uh, funny when you say that because I can't help think about that uh, uh, when uh, when uh, Michael spoke about print these and how tight it is integrated to to the uh, P uh, suite. Then it's funny to think about it. If you look at Microsoft as a company, it used to be a very closed Microsoft only kind of company, and today it is like opening up to the world and really understand understanding the the power of giving customers what they need, right? Instead of focusing on just what they need, basically. And that probably just make them richer, but also make your cost, the customers more happy with it. And, and I think that, that uh, the, the presentation that Michael gave today was uh, clear evidence on, on uh, how things are developing in, uh, in, in favor of customers. And it's always customers first, of course, right? Um, Michael, uh, you said that you were exhibiting at uh, Printing United. Uh, I think it's wonderful that you bring customers here to, to, to tell their stories because I think that uh, everybody who is presenting uh, products, software, solutions, whatever, it is always more funny to hear the story from the, from the customer side. Are you planning on bringing customers to uh, Atlanta as well or, or is this a one-off? <laughs> no, I'm glad you asked actually. We are beginning a user group and we have some key players, uh, including uh, I'm, Scott, are you going? Good, good. Yes, both of these gentlemen, Scott and he will be there, mm -hmm. as well as um, uh, some many other uh, important uh, heads of different end customers that we have. Uh, Hemlock comes to mind up in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are starting a, a using group steer, steering committee on the, the night before Printing United starts. So I guess that's the evening of the 17th. Mm -hmm. We're going to meet, have dinner, and, uh, and then some of them will stick around for the event as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, and that hopefully will be the beginning of, of regular uh, meetings for a new previous users group. But uh, but I mean, uh, 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 Scott and and uh, and Hugh, you don't know that. But uh, as I'm out, out of Denmark as well, we have uh, quite a close relationship with Casper uh, and Kit, who are the owners of of Printies. Uh, so it's it's kind of funny that you know you you get into such an like an international environment and. And Michael and I, we met each other at, at the Graph Expo in, in Chicago years ago. And, 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 and it's funny to see how these communities start building. And basically, um, I know that Casper has a very open-minded attitude. And when you have the user group, basically it is because they are open for even more input, right? And I think it's just, uh, Absolutely. I, I think it's very timely to what the needs are in the market right now. And I just think it's fantastic. So um, super great, gentlemen. Uh, anything here on the last minute you wanted to share or... Or are we uh, are we pretty much done, Michael? What uh, what do you think? I'm pretty much done, unless there are any questions from the audience. Uh, do they? I don't know where they come in. The, the, no, there's only one, and that is, uh, of course, um, uh, my good friend uh, Robert from uh, DataLine. He says that DataLine is also based on an ERP platform. So I mean, I was wrong. It is not just only print pieces. Also, oh, okay. uh, so <laughs> just so that is uh, corrected now. But I think that is uh, good to to be. Uh, uh, um, sure that we are bringing the right information to to the audience, of course. So uh, I just want to say thank you very much, and uh, Scott, I look forward to see you in uh, Phoenix uh, next next Monday. So that will be uh, fun to see your business and and talk a lot about print trees, of course. So uh, thank you, gentlemen. I want to thank I want to thank you, Morden, for the platform today, and also really great thanks to Scott and Hugh for jumping on because it was it rather was. last minute, and and it was such a such a treat to have them on rather than just giving a straightforward demo and boring people with software talk all the time. I appreciate Real life experience. You, I appreciate that you uh, reached out uh, to both Scott and Hugh. And I can tell you that uh, we got uh, Jim Holcraft is, is saying great job to everyone. So uh, at least we can, uh, should we just take a weekend break now? I think it would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Take care. See you guys.